Hello and thank you for buying Henson Flying Machines Ace Vendetta. This laser cut kit comes on five sheets of balsa wood. It includes one sheet of ply, the tissue covering you'll require, and the propeller for free flight including the rubber. To assemble the kit you will need a sharp scalpel or standing knife, a pencil for marking the parts, and glue, either super glue or balsa cement. I also like to use a file as well, just to round off some of the edges. The first step will be to begin by marking each of the sections on the sheet using the parts list guide provided. Follow the instructions, or watch these video instructions, to construct. Once you've removed parts 1A and 1B, the fuse large sides, from the balsa sheet, you will need part 2A, the cross section of the fuse large, just dry fit this across the fuselage like so into the upper davit here of the cockpit. If the slot needs any work at all, just widen it very gently with a knife or file. And then slot that into that lower section there. Let's see how that goes. Now, using a 90 degree edge, what we're going to do is just make sure that it's aligned perfectly 90 degrees to the fuselage and then glue it in place all down the seam wherever it comes into contact with the fuselage on both sides. Once that's dry and you confirm that it is at 90 degrees you can move on to the next section which is part 3A which is a nose section. This fits over the slot on the front like so. Make sure that it's fitting in flush on both sides and then just align it using another 90 degree piece again. It's very important that these are at 90 degrees as these are going to be the basis for your entire fuselage build so it needs to be aligned correctly. And put that down on the work surface and Line it up, check its alignment, and glue it along the inside seam there. There you go, that is the beginning. Now I'm going to use part 1B, slot that over part 2A and into the little tab at the bottom, and then same at the nose with part 3A and then glue it on the inside as it should all line up straight away. Then holding it flush up against the side of the fuselage, do part 2A all the way along wherever it makes contact. There you go. The next part fit is part 4A, which is the rear of the cockpit fuselage section. You want the part with two slots to be facing downwards. Now, slip this into the slots just below the little ace of spades. See there how it aligns itself. Now, just make sure that the tail section is flush and that any curvature is the same on both sides. And then, glue it all the way along that inside edge. Make sure that you get a nice smooth fit and everything is up. Connect it to the wood and just hold that together until it's dry. The next part fit into the fuselage is part 5A which is a small cross section that fits in just here towards the tail section. See the tabs here slot directly into the tab holes, like so. At this point, you're going to need to pinch the fuselage together until they fit. Now, as you're pinching the fuselage together, you'll see there is a bit of movement in there. So just make sure you have it flat on the surface and that these parts are equidistant and that the curvature lines up perfectly smooth around that center line. Go along the inside edge. All the way down again making sure you've got a good fit on both sides. You can see here how the 
bottom two slots are going to create formers in there and the single former in the top. Next parts are part 6A and 6B which are the top of the nose formers. These slot into the two slots on the top of the nose there. Just dry fit these in like so, making sure that they do not protrude past either side and that they're well down into the slot holes. These are going to guide the stringers which go along the top of the nose. Now as you can see here it's slightly bowed away so just apply a tiny bit of pressure until it sits flush and glue it on that inside there. And repeat the same with 6B further forward. They're interchangeable so 6A and 6B don't matter which order they go in or which position they go in. Like so. And if you do end up with them sitting slightly proud, you can always use your nail file and just sand them very slightly to fit properly. But with dry fitting, there's no reason why you can't get them to fit right before you do them. Carrying on with the nose, 7A and 7B are the similar shaped but flatter on the bottom with the two slots. These go into the underside of the fuselage here. In exactly the same principle, simply slot in the davits, hold it in place and glue it onto the inside with a nice seal. Move on, 7B, slightly further back again. Just press the sides of the fuselage together until you have a nice Hold on. There we go. You see there how the former is going to take the stringers and build up the shape of the aircraft. Laying the fuselage aside for a moment, we'll start constructing the tail section. For the tail section, you'll need to start with part 8A, which is the landing gear and center section for the tail. Part 9A, which is this funny little triangle thing, and parts 10A, 10B, and the main wing section, which is 11A. Now, this cross section is quite fragile, so leave it flat until you're ready to use it. Taking part 8A, slot the triangular section into the front, like so, into this slot here, all the way down until it sits flush, and then taking 10A, align this with the slant backwards, like so. Bring this forward here so it comes up flush with the tail wheel. Put tight part 10B on the other side in the same way, and then align them both with the end of the tail wheel, like so, flush up against the triangular section. Like so. Glue in the center of the circle, and then down both ends and also across 9A, the triangular section. This needs to be a strong bond as it will support the tail section in the fuselage. There you are. Now, slot part 11A into the remaining slot on the top of 8A. Bring that forward all the way until it fits firmly. Then, making sure it's all the way in and that it's at 90 degrees cross section. Just bearing down on the front there, just very gently glue. Like so. With the tail section complete, we can now fit it into the fuselage. As you'll see, the triangular section there is going to slot perfectly into that rear end of the tail section with the little notches aligning to the cutouts at the top. Pushing it down, it should seat perfectly like so. Push on both ends, pinch the tail together to make a good connection, glue along the end of the tail, and then where part 9A fits against the fuselage. There are. That's the tail seated in place. Once dry, we can carry on. Jumping on to part 13A, which is the cockpit dashboard. This fits in this little slanted slot here. Just 
put it into the taps, gently slide it down until it's flushly fit all the way through. Make sure it's equidistant on both sides and then just a touch of glue where it meets the fuselage sides. We can leave that now to dry and move on to the wing sections. The last part to fit before building the wings is the top of the fuselage section part 14A. This fits with the curved section forward into the two slots on top of the cockpit. Try fit it in place with the two tab ends there, recessed into the cockpit on both sides. Be very careful with this part as it is quite delicate. Hold it down in place. Once you're happy with how it's sitting in the tabs, just glue along. Hold one side in place until it's dry. And move on to the other side. Hold it down in the same position. This is going to give the wing section a lot more strength and just box in the fuselage. There you go. Laying that to the side, we can start on the wings. Begin with the wings, start with one side. You'll need part 15A and part 16A. These slot together using the little jigsaw patterns here. Lay them on a flat surface, push them together, make sure there are no gaps. And then just run super glue along that seam, being careful not to glue it to the table in the process. Keep the piece moving if you do get any excess glue on it. Move it to the center section. Make sure that both ends are aligned. Press it down and with a little bit of glue to make sure that you have a straight edge on both sides of that center support and then onto the inside of the wing, again making sure that the alignment is perfect and then hold until set. There are two types of wing ribs. Type 2 which has three holes in it and type 1 which has two cut out here. Type 1 goes into the outside of the wing, type 2 into the inside. Begin from the outside and simply lay into the slots cut out in the wing, the type 1 sections, all the way down, pressing from the top, making sure they are aligned forward. Like so. Once you are happy with the way they are fitted, Maintaining it flat, glue the inner one all the way along where it meets the flat edge balsa on the middle of the wing. And the same with the outside one, just make sure that it's flush up against the side, glue it in, and then with the remaining two, glue the front and the back fitted into the slot. Like so. The same with the Type 2 ones, moving from inside of the wing, pop them down, make sure they're aligned, glue where it meets, all the way along, another Type 2 on the outer edge here, and then the remaining two. Inside. Make sure that the leading edge sits into the slot perfectly and then align the rear accordingly. Be sure not to glue the wing to the table at this stage. Part 17A is the aileron of the aircraft. Now this has been made with a cuttable line in the center of it here if you're going to convert to micro RC or want these positionable. If you are doing that, trim away all of the wing ribs just before the aileron. Now with all of the wing ribs in place, slot that 
Right, so into the jigsaw position. You'll see there are a number of small holes here. These can be made for, um, used for making threaded hinges or just for some extra detail if you are going to turn it into micro RC. Best way to make this a movable surface with micro RC is either make a small threaded hinge or use a little paper cut out that you'll see on the A3 diagram. Right, with your first wing complete, it is absolutely crucial to make sure that you are building an opposite wing. So lay out the sections for your next wing as a mirror image of your first wing. These will be part 16B, um, 15B and 17B when you get to the aileron. Like so, make sure that you're looking at the first wing to build a complete mirror image. With the wing sections complete, it's time to join them to the fuselage. As you can see here in part 2A, there is a protrusion which is going to support the wings on both sides. You can also see the two tab holes here where the wing sections are going to fit in. Now, part 2A can be modified to set the wing. Now, what I'm going to do is just use a little bit of sanding to take away some of the material so that that slots into the slot on the receiving part of the wing. I've already done it on this side, you'll be able to see how when the two wing tabs are put into the slots on the side of the fuselage, that wing will fold up and fit like so. Now you can sand these parts away to a different degrees to set your wing at various incident angles. What I've done is sand it pretty much to be just a couple of degrees there. And now with that in place, I'm going to glue the wing all along that inside section there, making sure it's well up against the tabs and also to the supporting section here, like so. Now, once that's dry and I'm happy with how it's dry, I'm also going to put a little bit of glue on the back here. I will dry fit the other one and then I'm going to sand that so that it'll give me a different angle of incidence. I can also sand away part of the length of it so it fits deeper into the slot, which I'm going to do now. Again, a nail file is absolutely perfect for this job. You can, of course, use a standing knife or a scalpel to peel away some of the material. That's your personal choice. Right, I've got it like so. I'm just going to check the angle there. I'm happy with that. And, of course, if you're not happy with the angle, you can always return, remove a little bit more material by sanding. So I'm just going to do a little bit more. Dry fit. Right. I'm happy with how that's going. So into there, up against there to set the angle, and then glue it into place. All of the areas where it adjoins to the fuselage, and of course the cross wing support. There you go. And with all of that dry, you're going to want to turn it over and then just run some glue along that inside edge there, along the slot. And just really make sure that those wings are very well attached. With both wings in place, we can fit the wing stringers which run the length of the wing. Lay these into the cutout tops of all of the rib sections. Line it to the centre like so. And then just carefully it in all of the rip sections. Leave the long end on for now, protruding a little bit beyond, and then begin by gluing it to that center there. A nice good dollop of glue to get seated, and then to the top of each wing rib. So, do the same on the other side, and seating it in nicely. Now, the uncovered wings are quite delicate, so just be aware of this when manipulating the aircraft. 
glue on that inside edge. Work your way along, try and align them towards the top, otherwise the tissue will show a little bit of dab it in there. What we can do is with this section here is just push it down a little bit and trim off that edge so that it creates a smooth line down to the wingtip. Like so, and then just glue it to the wingtip so it creates a bit of a curve in the end. Like so, and now that this side's dry, we'll do exactly the same, bend it down. Trim it off and glue it in place. This is going to help the tissue covering give you a little bit more shape on the wingtips and a better aerofoil. With the wings attached and the fuselage coming together, we can start fitting some of the fuselage stringers now. The first one I put in is this rearward one here, which slots into the little davit there. Just hold that in place, push it down until it sits well into that top section, glue it to the top of the fuselage and then in along. In the tail section here, this notch area, cut it perfectly in line with it. It's going to give you a lovely bow shape to the fuselage. You can obviously give it a bit of a longer bow if you leave this part slightly longer. Then push that down there glue into here and allow it to take the shape that the form is created. And now move on to the nose section. Starting at the top of the nose section, just drop that stringer in there. Now you'll see here that there is a little stringer hole in the top of the dashboard. Do not cover that hole with a stringer as you're going to use it later. So, glue in the dissection just forward of the dashboard there, and then forward again, all the way to the nose of the aircraft, making sure that the string is sit down flush. Once you've got them seated, crack it clear for now. Move on to the next side, push it all the way in. All the way up to the dashboard and then glue it to the dashboard here yeah, and into the top of the formers all the way along. That's it. Move on to the next stringer. Pop that in the other side. Right, so there's plenty of stress, uh, spare stringers in the kit, so you can afford to break one or two. Or just use some of the excess material to make up some new formers if you run into any trouble. And you can just pair it off using your blade. Slice it away. Like so. Making sure that they're all sat down flush. Turning the aircraft over, we can fit the two longest stringers in the box, which are going to lay along the bottom of the fuselage, like so. Now, the best thing is to seat this towards the slot in the rear here. Push it in, and then, as you'll see, it should fall into the slots on the bottom of all of these formers all the way along. Make sure that it's pressed down well, so that it's aligned with the bottom of the formers, and then once you're happy with the fitment, just begin gluing them into place, making sure not to omit that furthest former or tail section. Just make sure that your alignment's right the whole way along. Uh, 
and then the same with the other side pressing down into there if possible and then following the curvature which is going to build up and give a nice effect to the tissue during covering. Like so. Ladder. The next parts to fit are part 18A and B, which are the tail uprights, these pieces here. So what we're going to do is turn the aircraft on its side very carefully and gently fit these into the slots, like so. Now, if there is a lot of resistance here, just very gently trim away some of the bolts so that it fits in nicely. Do this on both sides so it's equidistant. And that should just pop in with a little bit of persuasion. You want a nice tight fit, but not to actually force, force the holes in. Uh, let's try that. You can see the two teeth give you the direction it's supposed to go. Now, with that seated in place, you want to use a 90 degree edge just to check that you've got it aligned absolutely bang on. There we go. Pop that in. And just glue where it meets there, like so. <coughs> now you're going to do exactly the same on the opposing side, slot it in. Like so again, check your alignment is right uh, for flying, first of all, and also just for the general appearance of the aircraft, you need it to be spot on. Just add a little bit of reinforcement glue along there. Now, the actual control surfaces of the aircraft can be fitted at this point, or you can fit them later with paper hinges. Um, I'm going to fit them directly now. They simply slot in here. If you're making paper hinges, you want them on each side here. And I would advise these two rubber sections to work together with some sort of connection. So I'm just going to butt glue it straight on. Um, you can glue these at different angles if you want to, depending on the control you want with the aircraft. I'm going to glue it straight in place. Same on the other side, just make sure that you're happy with the fit before you actually glue it. Always good to dry fit parts. And also make sure that they're fitting flush. There we are. And the control surfaces for the tail are 12A and 12B, which sit like so giving the more acute angle to the inside. Now you can fit these higher up if you're putting more nose weight into it or down to bring it down if you're diving it. Also a paper hinge or there are small holes cut ready to receive a threaded hinge. Now I'm going to glue them directly on. It's a good idea if you are gluing them directly on just to run an extra bit of glue along the edge surfaces just to give it more strength and then Align it on that inside point there. Settle it in nicely. Hold it till dry. Excellent. Ah. 21A is a little detail which fits here into the front of the cockpit just to give a little bit more shape like so. Um, 21A is um, basically the front of the windscreen. You can put your card filler behind it or in front of it. It'll add extra 
shaping, a bit of extra design, and it's also made to look like an aerial. So just dry fit that in place in top of that cockpit section there, and then just bend it backwards until it fits into the top of the cockpit roof area and just amount of glue in there and that's going to give you that slight area and the shape to the front of it. Next sections are going to be your landing gear. The first part you want to put in on your landing gear is 19A which you'll see the shape cut out in the bottom of the fuselage there. Just frame that with part 19A so that you've got enough space to slide through the inside and then glue around it, all around the bottom there, so it seats nicely. And then onto the top. Now, you want to turn the aircraft over and do exactly the same with 19B, using that slot as a guide. Um, these need to be accurate on both sides. Reason being, if you end up with one wheel too high or one wheel too low, the aircraft is going to look very silly sitting. If you are going to be flying this aircraft, I do recommend that you leave the landing gear off um, just because they have a habit of snapping off on landing. These are the landing struts, um, 20A and B. These very simply slot into the bottom of part 19A and B, like so. Now you can put them straight in at an angle or even angle them outwards. Um, there are the sections which support the wings. These have been made adjustable. That way you can brace down from the wing either to the landing gear like so and then basically decide your angle and set it according to the angle from the hole in the landing gear to the wing tip. And the second one here or you can also build from here to the side of the fuselage here which is not just below the windscreen. I'm just going to put it together quickly and show you one of the options you have. So I'm trimming these the same length. I'm going to slot in one of the pieces of landing gear. I'm going to use this rearward hole and then fender it outwards like so. I'm just going to drop a little bit of glue on both sides. And then I will glue the landing gear down at the correct angle. Right. Turning it around, I'm going to do the same on the other side, exactly the same way. This will help me to align the landing gear in the same fashion on both sides. Make sure that you're using the same holes on both sides. Um, included in the kit is a toothpick or axle, which will allow you to bridge across here with the wheels and they will also free rotate as well. You can use other stringers to build from the side of the cockpit across like that, depending on how you want it. I'm not going to put them in at the moment, but they are there if you need them. Of course, the rubber kit included in the instructions shows you how to mount the propeller at the front for the cotter pin, and then how to mount the pin for the rudder back here in the rear section. Please watch the video for covering instructions. Thank you for buying Henson's flying machines and we hope you enjoyed the Ace Vendetta.